Hey, hi, man. I was um, just exercising for God. You want me to sing the theme song? <laughs> it's tempting, but it's already playing on a loop up here anyway. So just trying to, you know, keep in shape, right? Well, good luck with that. Yeah. And good luck with that small group in there. Go get him, Rock. So what do you mean, Miss Beasley? How many is small? 10, 12? Well, it, it's not just about a number, Daniel. Number of what? A number of people in a small group, like our small group has. <gasps> oh, is this a riddle? Because I am so good at those. Okay, Glenda, it's not a riddle. It's just an equation, okay? Our small group has how many number of people? Daniel, this is a committee, not a small group. <laughs> Have I been transported to the twilight zone? I mean, small group? Committee. I've tried to tell him about this, but maybe you can explain Hannah, it Hannah, what's him. the difference? I, I just... Okay, small no. groups are technically... Our committee is not a small group. See, isn't that clear? Uh, it looks small to me, guys. Small, like a small group at a church. What is wrong <laughs> with everybody? Hello, I'm here in my small group. What's that? Daniel. This is the Compass Committee, technically not a small group. Okay, I must be missing something because this is a small group and not just technically. One, two, three, four, five. Five is small. Five is a small group. Six! Hey, where's my chair? Park Grove Community Church has lost its pastor and its way and is closing its doors unless it reinvents itself, despite itself, with the help of Chuck. The Committee. A chair is an heirloom. I have a, I know what? somebody no. okay, put it Okay, you guys are going to thank me for this we'll in the long run. You okay. did this? Let's just you yeah, took I'm, the I'm, chairs? Yeah, I'm literally adding years to your life by having you stand up while you work instead of sit down. Chuck, what are we even talking about here? You, you know, at first we were talking about small groups. Groups that convene for reasons other than administrative tasks like our committee Which does. Which has an agenda and a lot of work to do so if we could put our heads together to well, find my chair. Why are we chair. talking about small groups? Uh, it, exactly my point now. Well, getting back to at the chairs. first, Daniel wanted to know how many people constitute small, as in small group. And thank you very much, Daniel, for that all-important life change question. Now if we could just move things well, real along. Real quick, Mr. Riley, before we get started, no, no, please don't. The, the small and, and small Shut. group may be inconsequential, but the concept of a small group is quite consequential, right? It's very important, all important, like you just said, mm -hmm. Mr. Riley, keeps the church healthy, right? Like exercise, please. like standing up at the table while you don't, work. Don't sitting do this to write down. small groups. Exercise is well, a small group. I like my small group. The Tuesday night Bible study, we just finished this beautiful wall hanging about our church. Ugh. Okay, fine, small groups, but why are they so important? Well, apparently not very because they are not 
on my agenda anywhere. Okay, well, we've talked about how small groups are a key component to any effective discipleship system. Discipleship system, right. But we've covered that topic before. Well, to a point, but let's dig in deeper on uh, small groups specifically. Jesus started a small group. Good, yeah, good. Glenda, right, yeah, Jesus um, modeled it himself, didn't he? He had, a, he had a small group of 12. Otherwise known as the disciples. Oh, that's very good. Thank you. Which, by the way, I might point out, were twice as many as the group in here right now, and they were still considered a small group. So, all right. How was that? So, what, what did Jesus do? Well, he uh, showed them how to study, um, how to pray, how to give generously. Oh. How to care for others, how to practice hospitality, oh, live sacrificially. Yeah. Yep. That's a lot. It's important. Well, it's probably why so many of the healthiest churches are built on these same small group principles, right? It's kind of like a, a part of the discipleship system. If It's like if a church could exercise, if a church could do walking squats or stand up at the table while it worked. Never Look, I, I'm starting to wrap my head around this, but I still don't understand the, the, the small group component. As I stand here in my small group, by the way. Like Mrs. Beasley was saying, committees and even fellowship groups aren't technically small groups. Well, isn't, they're not like Jesus' disciples either, okay? Today's small groups are more like a clicky, touchy-feely uh, groups of friends, Christian social clubs. What? How is that even? Uh, uh, Mr. Riley, that's not even the case. And why do we need small groups anyway? Uh, most of us have known each other for years. Small groups for those uh, mega churches. Small groups, um, even in smaller churches like Park Grove, uh, invite people to make a deeper commitment with each other and to the church. Um, in a small group, it could be a lot of fun to share your faith with others. And on the flip side, um, small group members um, care for and support each other in those times of crisis. I think what Mr. Riley is referring to when he says clicky and gossipy is a bad small group. Touchy-feely. Touchy-feely. Well, that may just be a matter of training your leaders not to let your group members set up a complaining campground, right? Uh, complete with uh, ooh, a critical campfire so they can, they can roast their uh, snarky s'mores. <laughs> I get it. No negativity, no gossip. Yeah, good luck with that. Someone's always complaining. What? Well, if a, a criticism or a complaint is raised, how does the group make it constructive? How do, how do they share it with love? Or how do they keep it open to new members as opposed to just the clicky, gossipy, touchy-feely touchy -feely kinds like Mr. Riley's talking about? Yeah. At my... Linda knows. Oh. Watch, watch it. One of the things we do at my Tuesday night Bible study, besides make beautiful wall hangings, we use the idea of the empty chair. We make sure at every gathering, there's always an empty chair. Reminding us that it's our job to invite new people to join us. Okay, that's, that's all well and good, but what happens when the group gets too big? Then you start a new group. Oh, here, let me, no. okay. That way, there's always room for new people. Good luck with that. Very good. Ready made for building healthy friendships. Mm -hmm. Could be the most important work that, that a church can do to uh, strengthen the faith of its members and the overall health of the congregation. And how's that? Huh? By listening to someone like uh, Mrs. Dixon drone on about her poor cat furball, or whatever the name of that animal is. I know what you mean. We, we've all heard about Snowball. She comes to our group. Snowball does? We let Mrs. Dixon talk about Snowball. Fuzzy, furry, fluffy. Because she needs to. Then we help her get back on track, back on topic. I mean, that way, I got to know more about what she was all about. And she helped us with the quilt. Like her and her cat. Small groups um, also encourage better learning, don't they? I mean, that's been my experience anyway. And how's that? 
without a, a pastor or someone educated in theology to actually lead the group. Now, that's a fair point, Mr. Riley. Um, uh, listening to a sermon is a great way to learn about the Bible, but it, it can also be easy to detach, right? Or daydream, it's been my experience. I think I may have fallen asleep last Sunday when the latest retired pastor preached. Yeah, he, he was a bit um, boring. Well, boredom's not an issue in a small group because everyone is expected to participate. It's where I better learned how to pray, study, reflect. We use the Upper Room magazine. That devotional is so simple to use. And everyone in the group held me accountable to deepen my commitment to Christ and hold others in the group accountable. Like Mrs. Dixon. <laughs> All right, so a small group isn't where you go to balance the budget or decide how you're gonna fix the organ. Now you're getting it. But this committee and every committee should operate like a small group. Now I'm confused again. So we're not a small group, but we're supposed to operate like one? Exactly. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. I think what Glenda is getting at is do we pray for each other? We begin and end with the scripture reading and a prayer. It allows all of us to share our joys and our concerns. Exactly. If we don't care about each other, it doesn't matter how productive we are in some meeting. I'm not sure the best way to reach non-believers or even those who are struggling with their faith is by inviting them to church. I'm not so sure either. I think that's why a small group just might be the, the most comfortable way to introduce someone to the Christian faith. The best kind of evangelism. Now yeah, Chuck's right. There's that E word again, evangelism. That stuff used to terrify me, you know, relationships, sharing your faith with others. And then I got to this small group and, well, I know it's a committee, but I feel like we're doing a lot of that work in here. I see now how small groups can be a powerful tool maybe even the backbone of a healthy church. A small group of people connecting with each other, interested in spiritual growth. There you have it. It looks like uh, our small, non-small group learned something big about small groups. Yep. Oh. We learned once again we can't stick to the big agenda. Well, I think this is our agenda, Mr. Riley. We're acting like a small group when our Bible study decided to make this beautiful quilt. Mm. Each person took it home and added a small piece to it. That way, their relationship became a part of the whole picture okay. of the church. Glenda, I I've got to stop you. Th this quilt that you keep referencing, the one that you made with, with your Bible study, it's just a mess. Oh, I mean, it really, no, why it's are there tassels? Oh, it's oh no, 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 why are there tassels? No, this is the back. You're not supposed to see the back. Um, will you? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh she had it flipped wow. around. Right. It's actually yeah. beautiful. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. Thanks, Glenda. You know, it may be difficult, messy, downright ugly to connect people in the church, but when it's done right, it's beautiful, isn't it? A strong fabric within the church, and we, as a church, are better for it. Yeah, I can see that now. I mean, small groups aren't about making churches bigger, but about its members deepening their faith in God. Amen to that. Thanks, Daniel. Should we make that our opening prayer? <laughs>